There's only one sure way to not get pickleball elbow again, and that's to not pick up a paddle ever again. And we're not gonna do that. But if you wanna mitigate your chances of getting pickleball elbow, or if you have symptoms right now, and you want to start feeling better, you wanna get back on the court and be pain free, I'm gonna give you four main focus points that you could put within your program, within your weeks, that will help you get rid of pickleball elbow and start to live a pain free pickleball life. No more elbow pain. And if you stay until the end, I'll give you my free pickleball elbow durability program. It's a one week long free program that will help you strengthen your arms, strengthen your elbow, strengthen your shoulder, your grip, so that you can get rid of these symptoms, get a stronger arm, and hopefully never experience pickleball elbow. The pain that you're experiencing, right, in this lateral part of your elbow, is called lateral epicondylitis, right? So pickleball elbow, tennis elbow, happens and occurs typically in this lateral outer part of your elbow, right? Typically, you'll see the opposite within baseball players, right? They'll see the inner part, right? That's the medial side, UCL, right? Tommy John. This with pickleball and tennis, you're gonna see this outer part, lateral epicondylitis. Condylitis, lateral epicondylitis, pickleball elbow, it's a chronic injury, right? This is something that happens over time. This didn't happen in one bang, one hit, one extension of the elbow. I mean, it could have exacerbated it, but this happened because of repeated motions over time and probably lack of strength. If you're experiencing this pain without taking it into your own hands, it brings on frustration, right? Chronic frustration that when you get that text to come play, you know you shouldn't. Or maybe you're in that much pain that you don't even want to go play, right? That's frustration. No one should be playing in pain, whether it's your elbow, your back, your knee, pain isn't normal. So many people I see out of the courts that just say, yeah, I, I, I got this knee pain, I got this ankle pain. Why, that's not normal. Let's work on getting out of pain and getting out of this frustrated, this annoyed state where you can't play as much pickleball. So my four main focus points are gonna come down within two little tiers, right? This first tier is gonna be strength and the second tier is gonna be mobility. Let's talk about that. So first, we want to load compound movements. That's my first focus point. If I want to get out of pickleball elbow pain, or if I want to mitigate the risk of getting it, I need to train strength and with functional compound movements. Examples, rows, right? Bent over dumbbell rows, barbell rows, heavy rows, you know, working your grip, right? It's not necessarily about it being a back exercise, which it mainly is. What is all in common within all those exercises? We're holding weights right? We're holding the weight in our hand. So if we're not training our grip in this foundational pattern, you're probably going to be more sustainable to pick up all elbow. So my first tip is going to be focus on functional patterns, right? All within your training program, but do more heavy rows, do more heavy deadlifts if you can, right? If you're, if you're form and if you have a good training age, heavy rows, deadlifts, farmers carries, train your grip, right? Get heavy weights in your hands, and be able to be strong with them. We're looking at strength in that tier, functional compound movements first, getting strong within the deadlifts, carries, rows, and focus point number two is going to be locking in on the joint specifically and doing eccentric loading. So what does that mean? Like think about a push-up. When I'm doing a push-up, the eccentric portion of that is the way down. So I'm gonna go super slow. We're gonna load this elbow, this forearm, the shoulder joint, and we focus on slow and controlled movements that are very heavy and very hard on the system. What does that do? That loads the muscle a ton, as well as it really loads the tendons and ligaments surrounding it. So we wanna do foundational work, right? Foundational compound movements. Secondly, focus point number two, we wanna do eccentric exercises that focus solely on the joint and the muscle and then our third point and fourth point is going to be in this mobility side, scapular mobility, and then fourthly, overhead mobility. When you get hurt, you look solely at your elbow, right? Like I got pickleball elbow. You're going to do everything you can right around the joint. Sometimes you have to look up and down from the joint, right? So maybe there's something going on with my wrist that is enabling my elbow to not function properly. Or maybe there's something going on at my shoulder that is the same. Maybe I'm, I'm limited in mobility at my shoulder that's enabling me to, to hit good flicks or, or volleys or whatever it may be. So what I see a lot is people are limited in, let's say, overhead mobility. So focus point number three, 
is going to be scat mobility. Focus point number four is going to be overhead mobility. Some people can't get their arms overhead, right? They get to here, and then when they go to hit an overhead, they have to fully extend. Maybe their elbow isn't functioning properly. I want you to start training your scaps, doing exercises that get your scaps moving up and down so that they have sufficient mobility. And the same thing with your lats. I want your lats to be stretched out so that they have sufficient mobility to get your arms fully overhead without you know extending at your, your ribs and, and, and extending at your lower lumbar spine. So you need sufficient shoulder mobility to enable your elbow to work properly, right? If, you, if, if my shoulders aren't mobile, if I'm super stiff here, then my elbow is going to take more of the beating. My elbow is going to take more of the load. And if I'm not training functional patterns, if I'm not training at all, then I'm really just a recipe for disaster. One thing that you still kind of hear a lot is called RICE. R-I-C-E. It's an acronym for rest, ice, compression, and elevation. I'm sure you've all heard of it. The actual author, researcher that came out with that study and came out with that research later, like not even that long after he came out with that, said that pretty much he was wrong, that this isn't the best course of action. And that was mainly for soft tissue injuries. But a lot of people take that same approach when they have pickleball elbow. They instantly take two weeks off, they rest, they ice it a ton, maybe they compression, maybe they elevate it above their head, whatever, they just start dangling. But that typically isn't your best course because with a chronic injury like pickleball elbow, when you take those two weeks off, when you come back two weeks later, you're more than likely still gonna have that pain. It doesn't just disappear like that. What you need to do and what is better is maybe take a couple days off, a day or two off, or maybe you're not drilling as much in that motion um, so you can kind of let it heal. You wanna let the symptoms reside. Once the symptoms have somewhat gone, you wanna load the joint. You don't just wanna sit and rest. You wanna get some actual load through that joint. So you need to train the joint. Like I said, use those two, right? Like functional patterns, eccentrically load through the joint, and then make sure that you're getting sufficient mobility. Don't just stop and do nothing. Start to do something. Add these four focus points within your plan so that when this comes up, you already have a plan of attack. You know what to do. Right here, I'm gonna drop a link for my next video. It's gonna be the basic needs of strength conditioning for pickleball athletes. I made this because I don't think that pickleball athletes are training nearly as efficiently or effectively as they should. Check this video out.